So based on the re interest in my review video of the Alux multi-fuel stove, I thought I'd provide a short update video to address some of the comments, questions, and suggestions I received. If you're interested, keep watching. As you probably already guessed, I am working in my backyard to make this video. Not enough rain, fire ban still going on in the woods, but I can do what I want to do today in my backyard and give you an update because it's not going to be a very long video at all. So to begin with, there are a few things that I didn't cover adequately in my original video and some of my uh, viewers commented on that and I thought I would give you an update today. But first there's something I think that's a little bit important. I didn't see this first time around but I think it's worth seeing now. I gave the measurements of the Alux multi-fuel stove as 14 centimeters right across the top. And it is, it's exactly 14 centimeters right across the top. And one of my viewers commented that that would be great because that means it would slide right down inside of their Moore's bush pot. And I thought, ooh, that's a really good idea. I don't have the Moore's bush pot, but I do have the Solo Titan 1800, which is a 14 centimeter stove, as well as the Pathfinder bush pot, which is also a 14 centimeter stove. So I thought, this would be great. I'll be able to store this inside and take it with me. It doesn't work. And I'll show you first, and then I'll explain why. So here's my Pathfinder. It goes in about a little bit more than halfway and stops, and it won't go in all the way. I mean, I might be able to force it in, but that's not the point, is it? Why? Why, if both of them are 14 centimeters, does this one not go in? It's because what I didn't see until I discovered it didn't fit is that there is a slight bow on the side of the stove, and it returns inwards a little bit at the top. So right about here, that's maybe a quarter of a centimeter more on this on each side maybe even less than that but when you add that up it's just enough to keep this from sliding inside of a 14 centimeter pot so i apologize if i gave anybody the wrong impression that this would store well in any of those pots i really wish it did but it's just ever so slightly too big for that okay let's put that pot out of the way so i'm going to be doing some testing today i'm going to be sh demonstrating the alox multi-fuel stove showing it with alcohol i didn't show that in my original video I showed how a gas attachment can be added to this. Well, I'm going to demonstrate that in operation today. I have been asked about Sterno. Will Sterno work with this? Well, I'll answer that question today. And solid fuel, like Esbit tabs. Can I use Esbit fuel tabs with this? And finally, and that'll be the last demonstration, is wood pellets. Because I think it's really worthwhile seeing how well wood pellets work inside of this stove. So what I'm going to do is reposition the camera, and I'll demonstrate each one of those things very quickly. Okay, I'm going to apologize in advance if you hear any traffic noise or any other noise around. That's the hazards of working in your backyard when you're living in the city. But I'll do my best to make sure that you can hear clearly what's taking place. Okay, so one of the first things was I had demonstrated how an alcohol stove will work with this, but I didn't demonstrate actually using it. So let's correct that today. So the alcohol stove I'm going to be using is the Alloc stove that actually came with this unit, which is a good quality stove of all the... Uh, Chinese-made knockoffs for the Trangia. It's, it's, in my opinion, the best, or at least the best one I've come across so far. So let me put that in. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put some alcohol in it first. Now, this isn't a boil time. I have done some testing with that. Uh, I just want to demonstrate this in operation rather than give you a specific boil time. We'll get that lit. This is the... Yeah, it's going. That's always the thing about working outdoors with alcohol, especially on a sunny day, is it's almost impossible to see the flame unless there's something in it that causes a little bit of orangeness. And this is burning clear and clean. All I can see is a, a little bit of a heat mirage and feel the flame, of course, going over the top. Now, the question is, what about the spacing between the top of the alcohol stove and the bottom of the pot? How about precisely one inch with those included pot stands? Now, the little kettle that I'm using, uh, actually, I'll face it, you still won't be able to read it, is also an Alux product. I've had this maybe 10 years. It's one of the very first things I bought off of eBay. It's a small 800 milliliter kettle that is hard anodized. You know, it's not a high capacity kettle, but for one person either preparing a meal or just wanting to make a cup of tea, it's a nice little uh, kettle. So I, I like using this. I, you know, I don't use it all the time because quite often I have other kettles. I have put this over wood stoves. I prefer not to. It just gums it up so much. that, Or not, you know, it darkens it up and everything. So there we go. That's working beautifully. 
you won't be able to see the flame. I do have a windscreen I'm going to have to include for some of these tests because there's a bit of a breeze kicking up in my backyard. But uh, I don't know if I can get any lower with that. I will for one of the other tests to show you the flame. So there we go. There is the alcohol stove working with the Alox multi-fuel stove. And it won't take very long. It's actually very reasonable to bring the water to a boil. But we're not going to wait that long. So what's nice about this is, and I'm going to be doing this backwards, I can reach in without taking the pot off if I want to use my snuffer or use it as the adjustment for simmer ring. Oh, wind picking up now. Hopefully it's not causing too much of a wind noise. But today I'm just going to remove the kettle and drop the snuffer in. And there we go. Flame out. Now, it'll take me a second before I can uh, remove that and then I'll uh, put on my next test. Okay, the next uh, segment is not so much a test as it is a demonstration of how this can be used with solid fuel in this case. So, I have an Esbit tab, a full-size Esbit tab here, and if I lay the Esbit tab inside to the bottom, the distance is well over two inches. It's two and three-quarter inches, I think, to the top of the pot. So, that really is much further away from the bottom of the pot, I should say, much further away than you want it to be for effective use of an Esbit tab. My understanding is, and I don't use Esbit a lot, so if anybody wants to chime in and, and provide me with better information, please do. But from all the uh, research that I, I, I have done on Esbit, is that the ideal height from the tablet to the pot is an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters. So what I did is I took one of those small little tuna cans, pop-top tuna cans, and cut it off at precisely one inch. That will sit inside as the support for my Esbit tab, and now I can lay my Esbit tab on top. The distance from the little tuna can to the bottom of the pot is one and three quarter inches. And these tablets are three quarters of an inch tall, so it's between one inch and one and three quarters of an inch, however you want to measure it from the tablet or from the base to the bottom of the pot. So, uh, you know, it, yes, you do have to rig something up to use to do that. There's any number of things I guess I could have used. This was something I had at home, so it was very easy to modify. Just cut it off, and uh, that works well. I guess I could also turn this over, cut, pop some holes in it, and make a small cat alcohol stove with it. I, I have that with other ones. That would work as well. But then if I went to use that as an alcohol stove, that is quite a bit of a height difference going to the top of that. I mean, I've done it. The alcohol burns very quickly, very hot, but it doesn't last very long. So, you know, it's, it's not the most efficient way to use alcohol. All right, so that's the Espa tab. Let's put that aside. Now, the other ones that I wanted to show were Sterno. So I don't have Sterno brand canned heat. These are the chafing canisters that are used in restaurants that can also be used for camping or cooking anywhere really. Great emergency use fuels for power down uh, type of scenarios. Uh, you know, look, to me, they're a little bit big and bulky to carry camping, but picnicking, sure, why not? The, you know, it's easy to carry. So the two types are the ones where it's a gel-infused... I don't know if I brought something else to pop this out. If I can get this off or not. This is the one where... Now, that was very smart of me. i find something in a second. There we go. There's something right there. One of the pot supports. This is the one where it's a gel alcohol... There we go. The blue gel alcohol inside. And, uh, you know, when I place this inside, it will go in. But you can probably see already that it's like maybe a little bit more than a half of an inch from the top of the, or the, the can itself to the bottom of the pot. So it's way too close, at least in my experience, way too close to get an efficient use of the alcohol. Having said that, if I take the two pot stands, that I made for this stove and place those on top. I'm now sitting in exactly one and one quarter inches to the bottom of my pot. A much more efficient spacing and uh, you know that that will work well. So if you're going to use this type of a sterno can or this type of a gel fuel chafing fuel can then you're going to need to have something to raise the pot off it a little bit. Now the other one the other type of sterno, commonly available, is the one that has the wick. 
There's like an oil type fuel. Maybe I haven't, I don't know, I'm sure most of you have seen this before. This is the one that has the included wick in it. And that sits at precisely one inch from the top of the little stove, the burner itself, to the bottom of the pot. So I've done this. They're slow. <laughs> it is slow. You know, it's like a, a 15 minute boil time for two cups of water, but uh, it's steady. It works. You know, it's a great way to keep water simmering for a longer period of time because these things are like a little candle that never burns out. So yeah, that is a good option. It's just a little slow. So that's with the two types of sternos people wanted to know about. Now, I'm going to have to set up to show you how this works with the gas. Actually, I think I can do part of it, and then I'm actually going to turn it on and run it. So I demonstrated this in that original video. This is a gas burner from another stove that I took apart to save the gas burner because I felt it was of value. And uh, I'll include it, or I'll install it. But there's something else I wanted to show you before we actually use it. So to, again, to use this, I can take the bottom portion, slide it in here. It sticks up through the stove, through that little included hole. I take the top portion and screw it on. Get it lined up correctly on the threads. There we go. And the height for that, for that burner to the top, to the pot stands is about an inch and a quarter. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I will annotate all this information in the show notes video description below so that you have that if you want. But of course, this is only relevant if you have exactly this type of burner. Still, there, the other one that I'm going to show you will still work and the height may be slightly different, but it's not enough to make a, a big difference in performance. What I didn't see when I talked about this in the video is that on the AliExpress website, they have a little video of their own on the ads for these stoves, and they demonstrate using this stove with gas. What they don't show is the burner. They basically show the canister hooked up to the stove and a pot being placed on top and it working. You just can't see the stove, the burner inside. So um, uh, thank you to the viewer who pointed that out for me. I missed it originally, but it's good to see that uh, it's, it's actually designed to do that. I thought it was something I had come up with. That's fine. <laughs> At least now I know it was designed. So there's how it sits inside and I will hook it up in a second. But what I wanted to show you, I had included a picture in the other video have a stove that you can purchase very inexpensively on eBay, AliExpress, and other sites. It is a gas canister stove. It has swing out legs and pot stands. Uh, it's a, quite a nice stove, very stable. I have used this a fair amount. Um, it's a very stable stove for putting larger pots on. It's a bit heavier. You can see from the size of the container, it's not something you're going to take if you're going for an ultralight hike. But this is nice for larger pots because it is more stable when you place this down on the ground and you've got the heat source away from your canister. That's especially nice if you have a large pot because there's a lot of heat being reflected back down and if the canister is immediately under the stove it can get quite hot underneath there and if you're using a windscreen it gets that much hotter again. So to be able to separate the canister from the stove uh, not only adds to the safety factor but it also reduces the center of gravity so you're less likely to tip it over. What I wanted to show you about this stove was this can be removed, the burner. In order to remove it, you do, and this comes off quite easily, is just unscrew. I'm not going to take it completely apart today, just to show you that it can. Unscrew the top, just like the one on, that I have installed on the stove. And underneath that are two machine screws, one on either side. And basically, they're holding the burner to the rest of the pot supports and legs assembly. So they, it slides right off, and there you go. You have a burner assembly that is virtually identical. I think even, yeah, I think the height is actually exactly the same as it is for the one that I've got inside of the stove. So um, there you go, there's an option. These are not expensive. I did mention that and I think I included the link in the original video if you want to go back and see that. I'll check and make sure that I did. If I didn't, I'll put a link to one of these stoves in the show notes of this one as well. So that's an option if you're looking for a burner to add to your multi-fuel stove that you can purchase one of these, use it as is, or take it apart. It doesn't go inside well, like it doesn't sit inside, so if you're going to use it with the Alloc stove, you will have to take it apart. Okay. 
I did say the last demonstration I'm going to use is wood pellets, but it will take me a second. Actually, there's no reason why I can't do this on camera. This is not like it's going to take very long. There's my MSR fuel canister. Attach it to my burner. Okay. And my lighter is where? Here. Get the gas flowing. Maybe I've got it too high. I did. There we go. I'm sure you can probably hear that. I will try and get the camera down to an angle. Put my little kettle on. And you can turn it up, turn it down as you need to. Include a windscreen around the outside. There is a gap. This little kettle, by the way, is 13 centimeters in diameter, so it's just short of the circumference of the stove itself. So there's a little bit of a gap, and with each of those scallops and the large one in front, any excess heat is leaving. It's not building up inside of the stove itself, so you do have some good venting taking place. And I, I've had some extremely quick boil times with this setup, so it works very well. Uh, I can hear the wind affecting the flame in here, but not severely. Most of it is protected by the stove itself. It's working really well now. But uh, okay, that's what I wanted to be able to show you. I'll see if I can get the camera down and give you a flame pattern, what that looks like, before we move on to the last test. All right, so you should be able to see the distance from the, the, the top, or the, the, where the burner is to the bottom of the pot. Nice looking flame pattern when the wind isn't shifting it off too far one way or the other. And believe it or not, there's already steam coming out of my kettle, so that's how quickly you can bring water to a boil with this. All right, now let's set up for the last test, the wood pellet test. Okay, I'm ready to get started with the, the wood pellet test, but I, just before I do, because I won't get another opportunity to do this, is I'll give you a few close-ups that I may not have given you a very good ones of in the, uh, in the original video. So let me move forward to the camera, make sure I can see as well. Ah, oh, here we go. That's better. So there's an internal view. That's the steel, the steel basket that sits inside of the, the uh, hard anodized aluminum casing. You can see that there is some rivets, three rivets, along the outside that hold it in place. A very, very simple design. You can see again the underneath of the stove where the airflow goes. You know, it does catch any live embers that are falling through. The holes are not very big, but you will get some embers fall through, so it's nice to have that catching. I did ask somebody to hold this still to see if I could capture that symbol on there. So if anybody is able to tell me what that means, I think that might be of interest to viewers. We'll put it right in the uh, comment section. That'd be great. Okay, so that is the whole stove at a close-up. Now, as I come back down here, So if you do go to the AliExpress website and take a look at this, you'll see that there are actually two versions of this stove. And the difference being is the outside base of them is exactly the same. What differs is the basket that goes inside. So in this one, the basket is permanently attached to the inside of the, the uh, casing. And you get the alcohol stove that goes with it as well as the pop gripper. Uh, the other version has a removable basket that can be dropped down inside and it has a grill that will sit on top. It'll accommodate smaller uh, pots, I guess, than this one will. I don't have an issue of using small pots as long as I use the crossbars. I mean, I can't get anything really any smaller than 10 centimeters to sit on here safely, or 12 centimeters even. I think it is about as small a diameter pot as you want to sit on top of this. So if you're looking to use your Stanley Adventure kit, you'll have to use crossbars. And it will work with that, you know, if that's, that's the combination you want to use. So that's the difference between the two of them. This one comes with an alcohol stove and the pot grabber, and the basket is fixed inside, and the other one has the removable basket and a grill that goes on top, or a pot stand that is, is more of a pot stand than a grill. Speaking of grills, well, I'll show this in operation when we get to it, but somebody said they'd like to combine this with a grill. Yeah, just about any size grill will work with this. I mean, if you're using charcoal, what a perfect thing to do. You can get a good size hamburger on there, a couple of small ones maybe, certainly three or four hot dogs or a couple of sausages. This is just a homemade grill out of a large grilling basket that I cut down for doing some tests with. And 
Oh, look at that. Isn't that perfect? And so I can, I can cook right on top of that without any fear of uh, burning my, myself or, or my food. As long as I use proper cooking techniques. All right, let's get this test started. So what I'm going to do is I have a cup and a half of hardwood pellets that I'll drop into the stove. And one or two may fall through that center hole, but the majority of them very quickly settle into place. There's, there's a phenomenon when you're dropping pellets into the stove that they, uh, some of the pellets are larger and smaller, but under their own weight, they tend to jam themselves up so that even if the holes are a little larger than the pellets, very few of them will fall through. They'll actually get caught by the other pellets and keep them from falling through. Uh, yeah, coals will fall through eventually. Not a lot, but again, that's the reason why the base of the stove is so nice. So there's what a cup and a half of pellets. Really, that's about the most that you're going to want to put in this. I am going to use alcohol. I have gel alcohol. Oh yeah, that was something else that was asked, I believe, is that, you know, can you use a stove with gel alcohol? So yeah, absolutely. In fact, that little canister that I had made for using the Esba tablet would work well with gel alcohol on top of it because it does have a little rim around the, the base of that little tuna can that'll hold the gel alcohol in place. Uh, yeah, so yes you can. But I'm going to use liquid alcohol, methyl hydrate in this case, a little, uh, maybe an ounce, not quite an ounce. Uh, it's the fastest way to get these stoves started. If it soaks in a little bit, all the better. And there, that's lit. Now, you're not going to see anything for a few minutes. So I'll wait until the pellets become engaged and then I'll bring it back. What I am going to do, though, is turn on my timer to get a total burn time for the pellets. Now, that's, that's kind of a, a relative thing because right now there's, I could put a pot on that, but I'm, you know, I'm not getting any heat from the pellets. All I'm getting is some heat from the, from the alcohol itself. So it wouldn't be a really efficient use of the fuel at this time. It's probably a little bit better to let it really get engaged with all the pellets before you start doing any cooking on it. I'm not going to do a boil test. I will put pots on top to show you how they work with the pellets, but a boil test is really not all that relative. The only thing it does is uh, kind of give you an idea of when you're par comparing stoves against each other about the efficiency of the stoves. So no, I won't be doing a boil test, but I will be showing you the different stoves put on top and what I really want to be able to show you is when the pellets burn down a little bit this is quite a bit in here is how this works as a wood gasifier to a certain degree uh, but as I said it'll take a few minutes to get them fully engaged and that's when I'll bring it back okay in full disclosure I had a bit of a, a challenge with the pellets what I discovered and I guess I had forgotten from some of my original testing is a cup and a half of pellets is well, it's just on the border of being too many pellets. In fact, what happened was when I lit these pellets up and I let them burn for a while, the full cup and a half that is, uh, I was getting a lot of smoke and down drafts were greater than the updraft, if that makes sense. So what was happening is, is the pellets were not engaging and at one point the down draft did put the pellets out. So I made the decision to remove about a quarter of a cup of pellets and then re-engage the, uh, the uh, pellets again. So I'm going to revise my recommendation to no more than one and a quarter cups to be safe. If you work with one cup of pellets, then uh, it's going to uh, be a lot better. You're not going to get the, the smoke that you sometimes get when you have more pellets than you do to match with the airflow. But what I wanted to show you, I think is very and fairly well demonstrated here, and that is how the stove is acting like a wood gasifier. Now, I do have a windscreen around it. You can probably see the edges of the windscreen because the breeze did pick up my backyard. But uh, the side vents of the inner portion of the stove are away from the wall, the outer wall of the stove, just by a little bit. So you're getting air being drawn up the sides and in through those vents. And it's, uh, well, there you can see it for yourself. I don't have to explain. Now, it's not as clean as it is in, say, my Solo stove or my Lexata wood gas stoves, but it is working. There is virtually no smoke, and it's a nice, clean burn. You can see the gasification taking place. So uh, one thing left to demonstrate is what happens when I put a pot on. So I'm going to put my smaller pot on first, the uh, one that's about 13 centimeters. Maybe I'll back it up just a little bit so you can see. 
tiny bit of smoke occurring at this point folks now to be honest that could be some of the the tires and things that are on the bottom of the pot but very little smoke and uh, you know there's still plenty of air around the outside I'll take that one off remember that's 13 centimeters for a 14 centimeter opening so it's very close to the diameter here's a 14 centimeter pot covering a 14 centimeter opening what will this do for airflow Still pretty good, actually, and that's mostly because, well, wood pellets burn relatively clean all by themselves. Actually, they burn very clean. And the scallops around the edges of the, the, uh, the stove itself are allowing for airflow, as well as the big scallop that's in front. So it's working well to provide a pretty clean burn with that pot. Now, if I went to a larger pot than this, I think I may be concerned with cutting off all the airflow. So that's when I would add those pot supports that I use for when I'm burning wood to the top of the stove. But it looks like you can get away with at least a 14 centimeter pot on top of this stove without creating too much smoke. You can probably see the wind picking up now. Okay, one more look at the burning inside. Firing like a wood gas stove does. It is a little bit affected by the downdrafts. You can probably see every once in a while the flames die down. But that looks like a wood gas stove in operation to me. Okay, what I'll do is I'll let this burn down and we'll just close up with a few words. Okay, shortly after that last shot where I was showing you how the Alox multi-fuel stove works as a wood gas stove, uh, it occurred to me I was going to have to wait quite a while for this to cool down before I could handle it. Then I thought, wait a minute, that's what these are for. This is the included pot grabber that comes with the set, so I was able to pick up the stove with the hot coals in it and I have a small metal bucket that I use for doing these tests if I want to speed up the cooling process so I was able to dump the hot coals into the into that bucket and uh, yeah it didn't take very long for it to cool down after that primarily because it's of aluminum even though it does have a, a steel insert so yeah very handy do you know one of the things that one of my viewers Randall Graham pointed out to me was that um, the original designs of these, the ones that are made from clay and used still even today throughout uh, Southeast Asia, um, aren't intended for hot intense fires. What they're meant for is for cooking or for the small ones like this size, if you bought one this size in clay, they're meant for keeping water hot just below the boiling point at simmer. So you can put a pot of tea on and keep the tea going all day long by just adding a few pieces of charcoal to it as you go. Now, we can get a lot more heat coming out of one of these things, especially if I'm using wood and those pot stands that I elevated up a little bit. So, yeah, it, uh, it's nice to know the history, a little bit about the history of these things. And uh, I'd love to get my hands on one of the original clay ones someday. Um, I may even see if I can make one, but we don't have good naturally occurring clay, at least in my area. Parts of the province do. But, uh, yeah, that'd be kind of interesting to see one of these things in operation. So... This stove continues to exceed my expectations for it. When I, when I looked at it and I decided to purchase it, I, looked, I thought it was going to be an interesting stove, but I didn't think it would be quite as versatile as it's turning out to be. It's still different than anything most people would quantify as a stove. You know, it's, it doesn't have a traditional square or folding design. And, uh, you know, it is all one piece. It appears to be a bit bulky. It is just a near miss that it doesn't fit inside the, the uh, 14 centimeter pots. It fits inside the 16 centimeter pots if you have anything that large with room to spare. So you could put a bit of a, a bag, a little a ditty bag or something to keep the inside of your pot clean down inside. So those things will go well together. Just ever so big, tiny, or just a little bit too big to go inside the 14 centimeters. So that's unfortunate. But still, as I was able to demonstrate today, it works well with with solid fuel, with gel fuel, with the alcohol in the in the sternal form, with the alcohol burner, with the gas burner, and with wood pellets. So combining that with charcoal and with wood, it is quite a multifunctional stove. Okay, that's all I have to say on this stove at this time. But if you have any comments or any su further suggestions for it, please put them in the comments section below. But until I come up with another video, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.